one. This is game four of the Step Ladder Final. The winner goes on to play Steve Lovell in the grand final. At a share of the big money, Jamie Gore is up against Fred Alsop. Gore has uh, beaten Tony McFarland, Ashley Ablett, Billy Gardner and Carl Bottomley on the way to this game four appearance. Looking to continue a run, a lucky break, even though he doesn't get a strike. At least that uh, has made his task of uh, sparing up this frame a little easier. Joining me in the commentary team, Jeanette Baker and Terry Winban, as we look at this shot again. Well, first shot, just getting the seven pin out and leaving the spare on the right-hand side, the six, ten pins together. Lining up on the left-hand side of the lane, going across lane, high percentage shot, and... Does it successfully, only just... But he has bowled some great <laughs> matches, this young man from the Gold Coast. Well, he's almost Jamie the Giant Killer. I mean, he's just got no fear. He's getting out there against people with, on paper, better credentials. And he's just going for the shots. His opponent is Fred Alsop on the way to becoming the second seed and having a shot at this tournament. He beat Tina Peake and Dave Davis, the American legend. Now looking for a shot at Steve Lovell. Ooh, a little bit wide that time. Using the harder case ball, going straight down the lane. Only this time, as we see, releasing the ball under the shoulder. Down it goes, but doesn't come back as far as he'd like it to and leaves the 1-3-6 on the right-hand side of the lane. Allsop's record. He has a third placing in the South Australian Cup this year and a fifth placing in the Brisbane Cup amongst his wins. The 1990 Newcastle Cup, second in the WA Open and Gosford Open and Canberra Open and the Cool Foam Cup. So a very consistent performer, and that's why... He's not happy with that frame, not at all. He's talking to himself. As he says, he wants the ball to go a little bit further to right, but it went high and still managed to get the spare. He really wanted at that time to go to the other side and, and run down the uh, the pins, but the left side looks pretty tight at the moment. Well, there just seems to be a bit more oil out there today for Fred, and uh, he's still using the harder case ball. See what he does this shot. Oh, it's gone wide again. If he persists in playing that line and using that ball, he's going to be running the risk of, of leaving some seven pins and some washouts and some nasty messes. So as we see his action, he's got good long swing down the lane, down the lane, but it's not picking up early like it was. As we see, through first hour on the left-hand side and he's waiting to, for it to break a couple of feet earlier and it's not happening. Just doesn't come up and... He's got to make sure of this spare because if he hits it the same as the last, he can run the risk of leaving the back pin. He's got an earlier roll on it. Good cover by Fred Orsop that time. And the 33-year-old insurance broker from Sydney, who's been bowling for 20 years, certainly took out a bit of a uh, insurance policy on that one and made sure he got the three to close the frame. And, of course, the way Jamie's going, you can't afford to take your time and work your way in. You've got to attack because he's going to keep attacking all the way through the game. It's gone light that time. Perhaps making an overcorrection for the mistake he made on the right-hand lane and leaving the two pins there. 21-year-old who came into this tournament through qualifying and winning the state final has six stitches to his middle finger and five on his ring finger of the bowling hand. So he was under a cloud before this tournament started. But the 21-year-old from Mermaid Waters has done extremely well to this point and is still a major contender and a worry for the number one seed, Steve Lovell, who's had to sit out the second round. Well, this is it. The unknown entity, so many of the bowlers know each, other, know each other's games inside out. They know what their assets are. They know what their liabilities are. They know how to psych them out, how to beat them. But with Jamie, nobody knows him. He's a local boy from down the Gold Coast, and he can do anything. Ooh. Maybe the nerves are starting to come out with Jamie now. He's starting to spray the ball around a little bit. He's been consistently in the pocket in previous matches. He's played, he's played a couple of tight shots, but he's come back with nine. Have a look at Jamie Gore. He's the Gold Coast Masters champion and the singles state champion in Queensland and the doubles first in the team so he's had a pretty good year but hasn't had the recognition that some of the other Queensland bowlers have had but certainly he's making everyone stand up and take notice here 
Well, he's joined, he's really gained a lot of credibility for his own performance in this event. It's very tough. It's a very difficult format to play. This one game, TV, the whole box and dice. Fred's a seasoned campaigner in this format. We see he's changed equipment. He's gone to the polished, softer case ball. See what he can do with this shot. Yes! Good decision, Fred. Good decision. Went to a softer case ball so he could play his shot and therefore come up with the strike that he needed. Knowing that ball's going to come back a little bit more than the one he was using. Nice light hit. Ten pin last out and he's got it. You see here the great technician. Nice long swing. Good extension. Good knee bend. Gets the roll. Gets the results. And we've had three frames down. It's all square between Fred Allsop and Jamie Gore in this game four of the stepladder final of the 1991 Golf in Coca-Cola Classic. Take a break. Back with more in a moment. Clint's bowl, a tense battle here between Fred Allsop of Sydney up against Jamie Gore from the Gold Coast. And uh, the winner of this goes through to the big money final of the 1991 Gold Pin Coca-Cola Classic. And the loser here will bow out with $2,500 prize money. Not a bad pay packet, but these two would dearly love to get in to the final against Steve Lovell. Whoa. Yes, beauty. Good. Got the break. Got the break. Changed equipment. Got the hook he needed. Got the reaction he needed. Answers back with the double as we see this shot here. Little bit inside target. Again, that fear of trusting it, but he got the break. He crossed over, tripped the four pin, and now it's Jamie Gore's chance. Yes, strike for strike. The crowd getting behind Jamie Gore in uh, game two of the step ladder final. He beat Billy Gardner, 224, 216. That was a great match. And in game three, disposed of another of the locals, Carl Bottomley, 194, 191. And here again, he is pushing one of the uh, best in the business in Australia in Fred Allsop. Fred is as cool as a cucumber. Perhaps not on the inside, but he shows it on the outside. And so does Jamie. And you've got to take your hat off to him. See if he comes back. Oh! <laughs> Holds his heart. <laughs> he knew it wasn't a good shot and he'd gone away with nine, but he was still looking for that double to stick with Fred. He went close. A couple of pins almost touched that one out. Let's have a look at it again. Well, they were pushing in that direction, but not quite enough to get the break and the strike that he needed. 21-year-old plasterer from Mermaid Waters on the coast. Closes the frame. And he has grown in confidence as this tournament has progressed. There's his family. They're not quite as tense as they were in the last battle. Well, but it's, it's early uh, stages. It's only the fourth and fifth frame here. Give them a chance. We haven't got the uh, fingers in the mouth yet. <laughs> if there's any fingernails left. But see what Fred does. He's got a double. He's had one good shot. One cross over Brooklyn. And now coming up for the fifth frame. Ooh. He was ready to ride that shot halfway down the lane. And then, boom. The ball started to jump. It was a little bit earlier than the previous shots had been. And therefore, you get the overreaction down the back end. As we have a look, down very early on the lane. Good knee bend, but stops riding it because he knows it's going to come up through the nose. Terry, how much pressure or added pressure is on Fred, knowing that he's playing an opponent who basically has been an unknown until this tournament and has sort of been a giant killer? Well, the problem here for Fred is that um, he's played everybody a... A hundred times before, and he knows what they're going to do. He knows how they're going to react to pressure. He doesn't know what Jamie's going to do. He just knows that Jamie's going to keep on going. It's He just doesn't know what to do. He, really, at this stage, he's just got to go out and keep making good shots. He's watched other matches where, where people have been in command and all of a sudden lost it. So he just has to keep the ball straight in the pocket. He has to bowl the best he can. And it has been tense in the previous matches in the stepladder final now. Fred Allsop striving for survival and a chance for a shot at Steve Lovell. Gave it some room that time. And yes! Yes! Come on. Telling himself, come on, come on. And he's showing a bit of emotion. He's he normally is. fairly ice cold. Fred is normally the ice man of 10 pin bowling. And there he is, jumping up and down, hitting it. Yes! Over. And again, swinging the ball, trusting it that time, giving it some room. And there it was. 
Oh, Jamie, that was a wild one. He's in a hurry to get rid of that shot. Now, the inexperience and the pressure all starting to mount. Well, he's got to really settle himself down. He's got to talk to himself and just go back to basics. Right? Fred's going to do what he's going to do, irregardless of what Jamie performs. So now he's got to sit down and just play one shot at a time the best way he can. And that's a good spare. Well covered, Jamie. And well appreciated by the fans here at Richlands Bowl. Tough one to get. But it's a good cover, taking the three pins on the left hand clearing out the sleeper behind. Jamie Gore takes a seat. He trails Fred Allsop by 12 pins. We've got four frames to go in this game four of the stepladder final in the 1991 Gold Pin Coca-Cola Classic. A 21-year-old from the Gold Coast, Mermaid Waters, is where he lives. So far, the giant killer up against one of the most experienced bowlers in Australia. Looking to get a roll of strikes. There's one. There's one. And the crowd loves it. They are right behind the local boy. It's almost I, like the state of origin football, isn't it? I tell you what it, it reminds me. It could be state of origin. One from Queensland, one from New South Wales. The young man has shown a great head on shoulders because what he's done is he's been in trouble, but he's found something. Exactly. He's shown a maturity that nobody has expected to see in him. They're waiting for him to fold, and he keeps attacking back. Now, let's see what Fred Allsop can do to counter that. Strike from Jamie Gore. He, ooh. Well, that was a great shot by Fred. He hit the target well, got through the shot really, really well, but just a little bit high as we see overhead, angling the ball out high and not quite taking that six pin out. But Fred is maximum concentration on target. Looking for the result, changing over to the harder case ball to go for the spare. Big dollars involved here. The loser bows out. Two and a half thousand dollars. <laughs> the winner progresses through to the final and five thousand dollars for the winner of that. Had a trip to Las Vegas and Fred Allsop realises there wasn't anything much in that. Well, I'm sure that as he saw that ball go down and the fact that it didn't take off as much as he thought it would, that... Um, he questioned next time if he lays a six pin, if it happens again, as to which ball to use to go for that spare. What do you think, Terry? Well, I think at this stage he's uh, he's wanted to really put uh, Jamie away there. He wanted that double. He's got a lot to prove. He he really wants to win badly, as you can see. He's not normally this emotive, and he's just going out there getting given in his best shot. Oh! He actually lost that one at the foul line. The ball, I think, got a little bit in front of him and he sort of hopped at the foul line, but he was lucky to get away with the nine. As we see through, as we see hopping there at the foul line, the ball too far in front of him on the release, but he got the seven pin out and back to face a single pin, which now gives Jamie Gore a chance. It does too, because he's got a strike coming up. If Jamie Gore can get up and get one more, he gets a double and it's all, all square in the match again. Not well a problem. Bowled, well bowled from a man with 20 years of bowling experience. The insurance broker from Sydney as the crowd gets more and more vocal. Well, Chris, this is it. As I said before, Jamie's got one strike up. He, if he can get one more strike here, he gets a double and he's going to actually go over the other lane and get a turkey and he goes from being behind to being in front. Let's see if he can get that roll. Ooh, he's been wide a couple of times on that lane. Whether he believes that he's making the mistake, sometimes there can be a variation between the lanes where you can get one lane to hook more than the other lane. He, he has to acknowledge the fact that perhaps there's something just a little bit different in the lanes. Perhaps bring his gaze back, adjust his feet, but make a correction. Good cover, good spare. And a solid base here for Jamie Gore. He has toughed it out with the best in this tournament so far and is just one win away from a grand final appearance. But the best part in Jamie's advantage is that he's out there to enjoy it. He's not going to go away feeling dismal. He wants to make a good shot. He wants to make a good performance and against the top guns too. Over. Oh, the last thing they needed in that frame. A little bit anxious. He had a beautiful shot on that lane before the four six we usually say is accredited from lifting your head off your target too soon and taking the work off the ball and boom the nasty split 
nature of one. Percentage play, you've got to forget about that one. Think about what the next shot is, which is going to be his 10th frame. Fred Allsop now, getting up. The Iceman, always calling a crisis, or always gives the appearance that he's calling the crisis. He's a great competitor, been around for a long time, and has quite a few titles under his belt. And in this tournament, has the honour of beating American legend Dave Davis in round two. Yes. And now looking to shut out his opponent, Jamie Gore, and line up a confrontation with Steve Lovell in the grand final. That was a super shot from Fred, as we see. Giving it room, swinging it out, and the five pin disappearing into the sideboard. And that is great. That is the most confident shot you can play, especially when you're getting up on the 10th frame of a tournament like this. And well established in the ninth and foundation frame, Fred Allsop leads Jamie Gore by 24 pins. Take a short break. Back with more on Nine's Wide World of Sport. At Richland's Bowl, as Fred Allsop seemingly on his way to a grand final appearance in the 1991 Gold Pin Coca-Cola Classic. There's a quick look at the scoreboard. And Fred, with 20 years of experience, would have calculated what he needs to do here. Really has the perfect opportunity now to progress to the final and meet top seed, Steve Lovell. Uh, go Brooklyn. Thank you. <laughs> Navigated a pilot. <laughs> Wasn't a good shot. Call to the ball, go to the Brooklyn, which for the left-handers is the right-hand side of the pocket. And there it is. We have a look, we'll see why. Inside target, pointed a little bit too much, but he got the reaction he was looking for, which is knocking down all 10 pins. And it's one of the few sports where you do have that room for error because it only takes a one inch mistake at the foul line is the difference between the pocket and the Brooklyn down the other end. It's giving it room. Oh. <laughs> Another nine and a half. <laughs> Unfortunately, they only count for nine in the book. Absolutely. He threw a better shot. He gave it room. He sent it out, brought it back, has a tap, and it wobbles, and it wobbles, and it wobbles. Good spare. And it gets a bonus ball. Converts it there. Finishes with a 2.13 game. Jamie's only working at a 190 pace if he strikes out, so the game's all over, and I think he'd just like to finish nicely. Oh. <laughs> Is that what you mean by nicely? <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't take anything away from this young man. It's been a fantastic performance. He has done himself really proud. He's done an excellent job, particularly when he was under doubt to even play in the tournament, having suffered that work injury. He wasn't expected to even play, and yet he has gone through with no fear and been fantastic. And to be beaten by Fred Allsop is no shame at all. Absolutely not. And please God, this may give Jamie the confidence to actually start venturing into higher competitive tournaments around the country, whether it be in Sydney, more in Brisbane, or even travelling further south. He may get a lot of confidence out of this tournament. Let's see if he can finish off with a strike. No. Not quite. He's done a good job. The That's crowd it. appreciates it. The run of Jamie Gore has ended in the 1991 Golf in Coca-Cola Classic. He bows out with $2,500 compliments of Coke and a hug from his girlfriend. It was a fantastic effort. But we must pay tribute to Fred Allsop. He progresses to the grand final and a place against Steve Lovell. That's coming your way next time we see you on Nine's Wide World of Sport.